Greetings everyone, it's Anne. I hope you have all been doing well. Today we are finally going to be discussing The Fingersmith by Sarah Waters. I recently completed the audiobook version, I just didn't have the time to read the physical book. It's big and the letters are quite small. Um, so I flipped to the audiobook, which I actually do recommend, I really did like it, but I really have been wanting to discuss this one with you because I this is actually a reread. I read it many, many years ago and I remember loving it. So let's discuss whether or not my feelings are still the same. So I guess we should jump into a synopsis of the book. So it's set in London in 1862. So think Victorian era, think Oliver Twist, kind of that grimy London vibe. And we're following a group of thieves and within that group, um, we're really following Susan Trinder. She has been enlisted to become a lady's maid to a wealthy heiress um, by this con man. And essentially they're gonna go to this house and she's gonna try and get the girl to, like get into her confidence and get her to fall in love with this con man so they can steal her fortune. And it kind of kicks off from there. This is the kind of story that you should not know more about going into the book. What I've just told you is all you need to know because for me, because this is actually a reread and I knew what was happening or was going to happen in the book, it was four stars out of five, which to me is still a really good rating. It would have been five stars out of five if I had read this for the first time, but because I knew what was gonna happen, I obviously didn't get that same level of enjoyment that I would have gotten if I had gone into it blind. But do not read up, do not try and read any spoilers, do not read anything. Like you need to read this book not knowing anything about it because that's where it really shines. The writing of this book, I thoroughly enjoy. I like for historical fictions to sound like historical fictions and the narrative choices that the author decides to take I think really helps you get into the setting of the book. What I don't like is when you get historical fiction books and it just feels like a contemporary in costume. I don't like that at all. As someone who really likes classic stories I like for the books that I'm reading to kind of sound like or read like a classic book and this is definitely one that the author it, I kind of get the feeling that she has purposely done so I read it and I don't feel like this is a modern story it definitely feels like something that is a historical book in terms of the language and the writing I thoroughly enjoyed it I thought that Sarah Waters writing is just really beautiful to read and, and listen to. If I'm gonna be really frank with you, there aren't very many negatives that I have with the book. I think the only thing that I can probably pull up is that it feels quite slow. So when I was listening to the audiobook, I was, I felt like it was plodding along for the beginning, but I knew what was happening, so I kept going with it. But I think it takes about 30% of the story for things to really get, like, kick off and then like we're off from there but it kind of feels very slow in the beginning and I think that's kind of intentional from the author it's almost like she's lulling you into a false sense of security because you think all right we're we're trying to trick this heiress we're in this con here we are this is what we're doing and then things just go left and when it goes left there's a lot that happens, there's a lot of moving parts. Now, because there's so many things going on and so many moving parts, the author actually has two POVs in the book. And I think that it really, like if there's any story that needs it, this is definitely one that, that needed that because you kind of get the two points of view of what is going down in the story. And it just makes things all that more delicious. But I think on a more serious note, if we're gonna sort of really take an in-depth look at the story. This is really a story about, I guess at the most basic level, about women's rights, especially women's rights within this time. Because with all the stuff that happens in the story, at the very crux of it, we really get an insight into the poor treatment of women and how disposable they really were and how certain systems were used against them. Even women in the story who seem to have some sort of power or leg up never really quite had the complete power that they thought they did. Their power was, was not infinite. 
basically they were always restricted because they were women and so it as a woman reading this book it was so frustrating but it was so well done from the author because because we had those points of views you can really feel the frustration with the situations that we were put in and I think it was just so well done the setting is really well done by the author as well because it mainly takes place well not mainly for the for the first part of the book it takes place in this sort of manner but it's quite dilapidated it's not really well looked after so I think that kind of helps add to the atmosphere of the book as well overall there's not really many negatives I have about the story the author's attention to detail is fantastic there's certain things that she sets up in the beginning that comes into play later on and you just have to just gasp while you're reading it. It's just fantastically done. And I had a really fun time reading it. If I'm being honest there, because I read it so long ago, there were certain parts that I genuinely forgot. And I found myself like gasping, even though I already knew this information. I think it also has to do with the fact that I watched, I recently, well, I say recently, it was towards the end of last year, I watched The Handmaiden, which is a Korean adaptation of this story. And if you don't plan on reading this book, please give this movie a go. It is directed by Park Chan-wook. He is really well known for directing Old Boy. So if you have seen Old Boy, you know how messed up that movie is I think that the adaptation that he's done for this book it's really really well done and it does follow quite closely probably up until the end where there are quite a few big plot points that they do change but in terms of the themes and um certain beats uh from the book it follows it pretty well it's not as I was I think it has a creepy vibe but if you've seen his movies you kind of get what I'm talking about with the way he directs his movies it's very much so this book is perfect for him in the way he tells stories as well because things come into play later on he's the kind of director that likes to surprise his audiences so it's a really great pairing so I do highly recommend giving this movie it came out 2016 um i know in the uk it's available on amazon prime i'm not sure about anywhere else so do give it a go if you are interested i do feel like the movie for the first half i would say even a bit more does kind of feel a bit meandery but like the book once it gets started like stuff really gets kicking into there and you'll really enjoy it so just to summarize this was a four star out of five read utterly engrossing fantastic if you're looking for something that has a sapphic romance in there this is for you if you like historical fiction that kind of feels like historical fiction something that's going to engross you have atmosphere just have twists and turns and keep you on the edge of your seat then I would highly recommend giving The Fingersmith a go I I'm definitely going to pick up um, Water's other books. I know she's quite famous for tipping the velvets. So I think that might be one that I pick up some point at some point next year we'll see what my schedule is looking like but other than that do check this book out if you think it is going to be for you so folks that was my review of the fingersmith by sarah waters do let me know if you have read this before and what your thoughts are but that is it for myself if you enjoyed that video then please feel free to give the like button some love and if you would like to see more from myself then do subscribe and i will see you all in my next video bye